Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Welcome to Stony Creek United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Michael. I'm very happy to see you all here today on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Sorry, I had to double check. Um, we, uh, do we have announcements? Anything? Uh, just that uh, the poinsettias, if you wanted to purchase a poinsettia plant, they are $20. And um, Christmas Eve service is at 7 o'clock on Christmas Eve. Other than that, I think everything's okay. Okay. And we will have uh, worship on Christmas Day that Sunday uh, at normal time if you would like to join us either in person or via the Facebook Live um, or listen later on the phone. Um, anybody got anything else? Going once, twice, sold. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to turn things over to our praise band who have... Uh, a very special uh, piece for us this morning, um, so I'm going to let them take it away.
join me now in the opening prayer? Eternal God, God power, power and grace, who comes to us in surprising ways, in angel appearances, in defeat of enemies, and in resurrection from the dead, show us the faces of Emmanuel in our time. Bring us from fear to awe, we pray, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now, now and forever. forever. Amen. All that we have is the Lord's. All that we may become and receive is in God's hands. For the sake of the joy that is ours when our bonds grow deep with others, let us give generously for the well-being of the world. If you would rise as you are able and join in our doxology on page 95 of the hymnal. Holy God, you bless us with many gifts. You retrieve us from despair and fear. You visit us with surprising proclamations, and you intend for us good things. We thank you for your steadfast love, for sending signs of assurance, and for the gift of faith. Use our gifts to bring comfort and justice to those in need, reforming the ways of our world for the sake of new life. Amen. You may be seated, and it is now a time for all of God's children. I'd like to invite our children and youth to come hang out with me. And remember, you are all God's children, so y'all can join us if y'all would like to. And I'm going to stop saying y'all. Morning. How are you guys doing? Everybody awake? Everybody had their coffee? <laughs> mm, okay, so I'm going to read you guys a story 
from our Celebrate Wonder Bible Storybook, and it's about something that happened when Jesus was born, okay? So it's called Joyous News. I'm going to show you the picture. Do you know who these people are? Shepherds. Shepherds, that's right. How did you know that? Is it because of the staff he's holding? Yeah, and I heard the story before that. Okay. And who do you think these guys are? Angels. Yeah, that's right. Those are angels. All right, so let's see what it has to say. In the fields around Bethlehem, shepherds were watching their sheep. It was cold and dark, and they were warming themselves by a fire. Suddenly, an angel appeared. The angel said, do not be afraid. Today in Bethlehem, a baby was born for everyone. The baby is God's son. The baby's name is Jesus. You will find him lying in a manger. The shepherds said, let's go to Bethlehem and see this special baby. The shepherds found Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. They told everyone they saw about the new baby. The shepherds praised God for letting them see the special baby Jesus. So I wonder, who could you tell about baby Jesus? What do you think? Who could you tell about baby Jesus? Nothing? Nobody? There's nobody you can tell about baby Jesus? You live by yourself in a box? Just you? Yeah. <laughs> Could you tell your mom and dad about baby Jesus? Yeah. Or maybe a grandma or grandpa? Or an aunt or an uncle or a friend? Yeah? Okay. What do you think the shepherds were feeling when, when the angels came down? Do you, think, do you think they were scared at first? Yeah? Yeah, I think that's probably why the angels said, don't be afraid. Because I don't know about you guys, but if I was standing out in the middle of a dark field and an angel appeared out of nowhere, I'd probably be a little afraid. Um, it would definitely catch me off guard. All right. Can we do a repeat after me prayer? Yes. All right, you ready? Dear God, thank you for bringing the good news of baby Jesus to the shepherds and everyone they met. Amen. All right, I need your help with one more thing. Do you know what it is? I bet you guys know what it is. Do you guys know what it is? The Lord's Prayer. That's right. We're going to do it all together because sometimes the adults, the adults forget the word sometimes. So, All right, you guys ready? <laughs> Yeah, I know. All right. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You guys did an awesome job. Thank you so much. And everybody can come have a sucker out of the giant coffee cup. Yes. Did you drink coffee out of this this morning? No, Miss Sarah won't let me drink coffee out of this. I asked. She said something about my heart stopping. All right. And if you would rise as you are able and join in singing hymn number 250, Once in Royal David City.
may be seated. Now is the time that we bring before God and God's people the things that may be weighing upon our hearts and our minds, but also those things that give us cause for celebration. Do we have any joys and concerns we'd like to lift up this morning? Um, prayers for my niece, Robin, of the family I've been asking you to pray for. She is in the hospital with um, a lot of a UTI, pneumonia, and uh, they're checking on her heart, too. So pray for her. They're in Tennessee. I just want to wish... Uh, Happy anniversary. I'm looking for Laurel. There she is. Laurel and Leon. This is their anniversary. Uh, I always remember it because today would have been my 55th. Um, congratulations. Happy anniversary, both of you. How many years? 58? A whole bunch. I just want to say hello again to Jean, and my mind just went blank. Lynn. Lynn. <laughs> it's been so long I forgot. But um, <laughs> anyway, I knew your names when you walked in the door. But it's good to see you both back in church. I know it's been a while, but we're great. It's good to see you. And also, this is more of an announcement, but um, we're going to continue taking uh, contributions for the pastor and staff. Probably, uh, I think the plan is I talked to Ryan Ward, or we were emailing over the week, and it um, looks like we're going to do this for another couple weeks. So it's not too late. Um, we're doing really well. People are really showing their appreciation. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, just wanted to give you an update. We'll probably do that the first part of January. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, I do want to add to our list uh, two things. Uh, one, uh, travel mercies for everyone who will be going um, out and about this holiday season, whether close or traveling great distances to be with family and friends. Um, and I also would like to ask you for uh, prayers for those who are uh, in mourning um, one of the members from Macon uh, passed away uh, Friday morning. Um, and so I'm asking for prayers for uh, Doug's family um, and, for, and for the Macon church, because that is actually the, the second uh, person who's passed away in the last probably about three or four weeks. So... If you would please join me in an attitude of prayer. As we come to the festival of Jesus' birth, let us pray that we hear God's word clearly and receive the faith God gives. When I say the words, O oh God, who is with us, I invite you to respond with, hear our prayer. Holy one who astonishes us with surprising gifts, we pray for your church and for people of faith in every language and belief, that your wisdom will show us our common life, and that all people may rejoice in what you create. O oh God, who is with us, hear our prayer. Giver of the stars and planets, creator of rivers and oceans and creatures large and small, we pray for wisdom as we live on and with your earth. Evoke in us awe for your goodness in these familiar surroundings, our hills and valleys, forests and deserts, that the powers you have placed here to move through soil and air will remind us always of your bounty and your love. O oh God who is with us, hear our prayer. Power above all powers, we pray for the leaders of governments in every nation, 
that they may have wisdom to choose what serves the common good. We ask that you would help them to lead with love in their hearts, peace in their agendas, and that we might find ways to stop the fighting, the wars, and come together under your common love. O oh God, who is with us, hear our prayer. Lover of all creation, we pray for all those we too easily forget, those of your children who are poor or homeless or in prison, those who are sick or lonely or frightened, all who hunger for faith and hope, Care for them that they may be strengthened by joy in your healing. We especially lift up Robin and pray for her healing as she is in the hospital and ask that you would watch over all of the efforts of the medical staff who are surrounding her in their efforts to heal her. O oh God who is with us, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Holy One, in whose community we thrive, we pray for those with whom we share our daily lives, our families, friends, and neighbors, those with whom we work and play, those whose names we do not know who provide for us, that we may all be renewed in courage and nurtured in hope. O oh God, who is with us, hear our prayer. Sustainer of your people, we give you thanks for members of the body of Christ in every age and every place who by their witness bring us here today. We especially also lift up prayers of thanksgiving for Laurel and Leon celebrating another anniversary, for having Jean and Lynn back in worship with us as they continue to heal. We lift up prayers of travel mercies for all of those who are going out and about this holiday season, whether great distances or even just around in the community. As the snow begins to fall and ice begins to form, we pray that everyone will travel safely. And God, we also lift up all of those who are mourning today. As we look towards all of the members of the body of Christ who have come before us and have gone on to perfection in you through your grace, we ask that you would bring comfort through your Holy Spirit to those who are still here, who are missing them greatly. Be with them in their mourning. Help them to know there is no right way to mourn. We all do it in our own time, in our own ways. God, we ask that you come to us in Christ that we who live in this world by faith may see that faith confirmed in the world to come through the risen one who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And if you would please join me in our prayer response number 204 in your hymnal, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Please join me aloud in our prayer for illumination as printed in the bulletin. Lord God, in this dry and dusty place, pour out the power of your spirit so that your word may blossom in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our way in the wilderness. Amen. This morning for our Advent meditation, we will be using a hymn of focus 
called O Little One. It is not the one we will be singing at the end of our Advent meditation. However, it is one that carries some of the, the same themes and uh, focuses. So I'm going to read this uh, hymn to you now. This is by Samuel... Yeah, it's by Sam. Uh, back in 1650... Um, O little one sweet, O little one mild, thy father's purpose thou hast fulfilled. Thou camest from heaven to mortal ken, equal to be with us poor men. O little one sweet, O little one mild, with joy thou hast the whole world filled. Thou comest here from heaven's domain to bring men comfort in their pain. O oh, little one sweet, O oh, little one mild, in thee love's beauties are all distilled. Then light in us thy love's bright flame, that we may give thee back the same. O oh, little one sweet, O oh, little one mild, help us to do as thou hast willed. Lo, all we have belongs to thee. Ah, keep us in our fealty. What contrast this carol, what contrast this carol brings to light? In each stanza it rightly deems Jesus the sweet, mild babe, yet tells of the incredible feats he accomplished as a man. On that first Christmas morning, who could have foreseen all that the tiny child in the manger would eventually fulfill? The author explains that Jesus faithfully served the Father's sovereign plan. He filled the world with joy and comforted those who were suffering under great affliction by bringing heaven down to earth. Jesus came to proclaim and demonstrate the kingdom of God. Wherever he went, he preached the good news and freed those in bondage. He asks us to do the same, fulfilling the Father's purpose. We are to be his hands, reaching out to those in need. We are to be his feet seeking out those who are lonely and afraid. We are to be his mouth, speaking God's message of love to those who so desperately need to hear it. If we hope to attain such a high calling, we must call out to Jesus. Only by his grace and power will we ever remain faithful to that precious duty as we listen to his call to action and look to the broken, hurting world, we can only cry out with the carol writer, ah, keep us in our fealty. Jesus' ministry didn't end with his ascension into heaven. It continues today through everyone in whom the Spirit of God dwells. As you consider the passages I'm about to read, petition the Lord for a greater revelation of the calling he has placed upon your life. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has appointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the downtrodden will be freed from their oppressors, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. The truth is, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, and even greater works, because I am going to be with the Father. These signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name, and they will speak new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety, and if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and heal them. Please join together now in our prayer. Jesus, impart to us the bright flame of your love that we may function as your humble servants. Fill us with your spirit, that we may attend to those in need. May your life so flow through us that your ministry would be displayed in our feeble hands, feet, and mouths. May you receive the glory as we go forth in response to your call to touch the lost, the poor, the sick, and the dying. Amen. 
If you would rise as you are able for our hymn number 217, Away in a Manger. be seated. Our scripture reading this morning can be found beginning on page 955 in the Bibles and the Pews. Again, the Bibles and the Pews are the NIV translation. I will be reading to you from the Common English Bible translation. We are in the first chapter of Matthew's Gospel, verses 18 through 25. And this section of text is headed with the title, Birth of Jesus. This is how the birth of Jesus took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, before they were married, she became, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place so that the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look, A virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel meaning God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as the angel from God commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he didn't have sexual relations with her until she gave birth to a son. Joseph called him Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. If you would join me once again in an attitude of prayer. Coming Christ, child, light of the world, savior of the nations, prince of peace, promised Messiah, we are preparing to welcome you into the world. And just like the worries and anxieties that we might have preparing for the birth of any other child, we hold many insecurities and concerns as we await your arrival. We know what your arrival means. We know that you bring change, change that may make us uncomfortable, change that may turn everything upside down. But we also know that we can trust you and in you. And we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit into our hearts and minds to quiet the worries and raise up in us courage to follow you. And now may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts together in this place be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, hello again, and may God bless you all this Advent season and in all seasons in your life. (coughs) Excuse me. 
Today, as I mentioned earlier, is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and it is our final Sunday before we celebrate Christmas Eve and then Christmas Day. Just in case you missed it earlier, our Christmas Eve service will be at 7 o'clock, um, and we will again be celebrating worship on Christmas Day, as it is a Sunday, at our normal worship time. Advent is called a season of anticipation, when we are awaiting the coming birth of our Savior, Jesus. Advent can also be seen as a season of anticipation as we are awaiting the return of our Savior. But in reality, no matter which way you may see it or think about it, a common theme throughout this time is about waiting. Waiting. Yuck. No one likes waiting. At least not most of the time. Waiting, we tend to associate that with, with negative things like that waiting is inaction or it's the result of apathy or lacking passion or even the ineptitude of someone else's abilities that keeps us waiting. But the truth here is that waiting really is something we should be seeing as as intentional and deliberate, something that requires discipline and something that is just. The spiritual discipline of waiting directly impacts our emotional health, our spiritual vitality, and, and it leads us to actions that are grounded in faith. So we continue this morning in our Advent and Christmas Eve sermon series, Waiting Well, where we're focusing on the lesson that Advent offers to us in waiting and also in knowing when to act. Last Sunday, we, we focused on how oftentimes when we have no other option than to wait, we may not always make the best use of that time. Sometimes we use that waiting time for rest, which, which is appropriate and, and needed in our lives. But sometimes rest is not what God has determined that we need. Today we're going to continue with the revised common lectionary gospel reading for today that I read to you just moments ago from Matthew's gospel in this message titled, Don't Drop the Baby, which I think is just a good thing in general to think about. You know, as, as a pastor, someone who preaches, one of the challenges of using the Revised Common Lectionary at times is that there are moments or weeks when the chosen scripture passages are, how can I say, a bit dry or even kind of boring. And, and I really, I feel awful saying that, but there are definitely some passages that are more interesting or action-filled than others. Thankfully, this reading from Matthew is not one of those that I would classify in the dry category. There are countless themes that are gifted to us, me as a preacher, you as a congregation, in this text, um, including thinking about God speaking through dreams, the patriarchal focus of Joseph's role in this whole thing, and, and really so much more. And as you've probably heard me say it before, there is rarely, if ever, only one single theme or lesson that we can find in any given passage of Scripture. This particular one just so happens to have a whole bunch that are, are deep and interesting and incredibly relevant the things that are going on in our world yet today. For instance, the awesome responsibility of child rearing is one that I think many of us can relate to, whether from raising our own children or being a part really of, of any child's life. You don't have to be the biological parent of a child to be a part of, of helping raise a child and having that kind of impact with them. And I think it's more than fair to say that just as trying to raise your own children comes with its own unique set of challenges, 
or opportunities. That's the more positive way to say that, I think. Um, there are just as many other unique challenges or opportunities in, in holding a place in the life of a child who is not your own and still having that impact in their development and their growth. I think a perfect example of this is when we look at, at children and their experience in worship and their experience when they are in this worship space or just any time we're doing anything in our building. What does it mean for the church, again, the people, not the building, to welcome children into the world today and not just into our faith communities. We can challenge ourselves to consider how we might better raise the children and support families that live in the surrounding community and not just the ones who, who come through our doors on Sunday mornings or when we have an event. I know that something that has course through my very being and maybe something some of you are familiar with, but I am still even to this day a bit terrified when suddenly handed a tiny, frail newborn to hold, even if just for a few moments. I still remember the first words out of my mouth when the nurse handed AJ to me. The doctors uh, had been speculating that AJ would be somewhere around eight to eight and a half, nine pounds, um, based on how they figure all that fun stuff out. Um, and I was actually, I think, nine and a half pounds when I was born, so I wasn't really surprised when they were telling us that. However, AJ was only about six pounds, nine ounces. And they hand me this tiny little human and without really thinking, it was about 2.30 in the morning, I uttered out the words, where's the rest of him? Because I was expecting something a little bit larger. But I was beyond terrified because this tiny little life was now in my hands and, and, and what if I dropped him or what if I wasn't wasn't holding him right, supporting his head properly. I'm the youngest child in my family. I know nothing about babies or raising children. The amount of information I don't know could fill the Grand Canyon a million times over. I remember thinking, and I don't remember the nurse's name at this point, but I remember thinking, what are you doing? Don't hand that to me you are putting that child's life at risk because I don't know what I'm doing. And then the first time that I was blessed to, to do a baptism was for a two-week-old child. Now, you might think that at this point I'd be more comfortable because around this time, AJ was about five or six months old. Nope. You see, I'd gotten used to carrying AJ, who obviously had started to grow and was no longer under seven pounds. So because his growth was, you know, over a timeline, you don't always realize the change in weight on a day-to-day -day basis. And when they handed me this tiny two-week-old baby, the first thought in my brain Thankfully, I didn't say this out loud this time, but the first thought I had was, where's the rest of them? Because again, it was this super tiny person. It actually felt like I wasn't even holding anything. I think the clothes that child was wearing probably, at least in my brain, weighed as much as the child. I still had all those fears of what if I trip and drop them or I'm not holding them quite right. Again, supporting their head and their body, it all came rushing back in that moment. 
especially because this was the first baptism I was doing in my calling as a pastor. And you don't want to have that go bad. It's not a good way to introduce yourself to a congregation. I thankfully kept it together and everything went well. But even having gone through that experience of, of having my own child just a few months earlier, I still felt so unprepared in, in holding that little baby in front of a full congregation of the parents' family members and friends, and it was just a lot. I can even remember this fear actually going back a bit further in my life to when my younger niece and nephew were born. They were only a few months apart. Um, as many of you know, my sisters are twins, so why not, you know, do a lot of stuff at the same time period? But I remember thinking as my sisters handed me their newborn child um, at the different points when they were born, was, wow, you are brave and have a much more confident opinion of my ability to keep this child alive than I do. And I think both my sisters at those different times when they let me hold their babies could, could sense my reluctance to, to take these tiny newborns into my arms. Amazingly, though, that didn't stop them. And I think, or at least I like to think, that part of the reason that they made that choice to, to hand me this precious little miracle was because that they knew that this was the world that I had stepped into. Whether that was by choice or by circumstance, I too was now responsible for raising up these children. Now in the end, their trust was rewarded. I have yet to drop a child so far in my life. I plan to keep that track record going. And something that surprised me and actually several other people in my family, although apparently not my mother, was I became something of a baby whisperer. Not long after AJ was born, we were back in our apartment uh, in seminary, getting things packed up, ready to come move up here to Michigan. And our friends, who uh, husband is a pastor in another church uh, in Michigan, um, he and his wife had their daughter four weeks to the day uh, before AJ was born. And unfortunately, um, due to his internship, he could not stay home with their daughter, and uh, his wife had to return back to work as well. So my wife lovingly offered to watch our friend's newborn baby girl. And I remember thinking when she told me this, what's wrong with you? We have one, now you're gonna make it two. Um, and I felt really bad because no matter what Sarah tried, this, this little girl was just not having it. She cried, she screamed, and and Sarah was already, I think, still exhausted from giving birth to AJ and everything else that, that pregnancy brings. And I could just see this kind of look of defeat. And so I swallowed hard and I picked up this very unhappy little girl and I held her close to my chest. And within a few seconds, she calmed down and actually fell asleep. Now I tried not to take that as meaning that as a pastor I was gonna be putting a lot of people to sleep, but you never know. Um, I will say I was surprised. However, after talking with my mother, she reminded me that I'm always warm. I, I tend to give off heat, kind of like a furnace. And oftentimes newborns and, and little ones become calm and comfortable with that warmth. 
So it's not my winning personality, just the temperature imbalance that I've lived with in my life. I actually did the same thing with my great niece when we were out with our family one time and neither her mother nor her father could get her to, to calm down and stop crying. And being the smart aleck that I was, I said, no, just, just give her to me, I got this. And as soon as they gave her to me and I held her close, she calmed down pretty quickly and dozed off. Maybe that should have been an indication sooner to me that I was meant to go into parish ministry. As I said, I, I seem to have this innate ability to put people to sleep just by being around them. And I think of all those experiences that I've had, um, experiences that I don't think are that unique or different than many parents and, and aunts and uncles and other people have had. And then I think about Joseph. Can, can you even imagine how Joseph must have felt? I don't know how familiar Joseph was with babies or how comfortable he was around them. We're not really told. We don't know if he was the oldest or youngest in his family. Um, at that time in history, men didn't always spend that much time around children. It was usually the wives and others who cared for the children. But can you even begin to imagine what might have been coursing through his thoughts? I worry about properly holding and caring for a child that is my own and here Joseph is holding the Messiah, the promised Savior, the very Son of God. I'll be honest, I think a panic attack would be an understatement to what I would have gone through in those moments. I definitely don't think I would have been ready for that. I don't know if I'd ever be ready for something like that. But the truth is, just like Joseph, whether we're ready for it or not, whether we may seek it or not, whether we really want it or not, here we are. The baby Jesus is coming into the world. He is coming and now we have to decide how we respond. I want you to think about this for a moment. What are the responsibilities that we take on when we claim faith in the coming of the Christ child? But before we get caught up in, in the broader theological or social issues that are brought up in this passage and, and that question, I think we should take some time to think about and consider the very human feelings surrounding the impending birth. I know with, with AJ, I had anxiety. I had expectations. I had fears. And this was just for my own child. When we think about, about Jesus, think about the additional anxieties, expectations, and fears that are stirred up in this prospect of, of meeting God in the flesh by the prospect of meeting the long-awaited promised Messiah. Just like many people back then, we may have lived our whole lives waiting for such an experience of the divine. Can we even ever adequately prepare ourselves for a life-altering moment. I know, again, thinking back to AJ's birth, and Sarah and I are both people who like to plan. We like to be as prepared as possible for things. We both acknowledge, though, that people make plans and God laughs. But in this instance, how, how do we even begin to try to prepare ourselves for what is coming? 
I also think we need to, to think about the experience of a child who comes in the midst of, of our church, how our church responds to our duties to help raise a child while those children are not God in flesh, necessarily, they still represent something of saving for us. People will often talk about how children are the future of the church, and there is truth in that statement, but it's more than that. Children are also the presence of the church. How we respond to, to the children who come amongst our faith community, how we participate in their growth and development, all of that is so incredibly important. It's just as important as those impacts we have on the children in our lives who may be related to us, either through blood or through whatever other means. And the way we respond to those children, it's, it's not exactly the same ways we respond to the birth of Jesus, but I would argue it's just as significant. Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of humanity, we do also to him. I want you to take some time these next few days before we get to Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and I want you to think about all of this. Think about how you respond in these realities and maybe how in some circumstances you wish you had responded. Think about our church, our faith community. Think about the ways you know we respond to those responsibilities of of being a part of a child coming into this world. And think about, think about the amazing opportunity it is to be a part of that, whether welcoming a child from our community or welcoming the Christ child. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able for our closing hymn number 228, He is Born.
Beloved siblings, in the coming Christ, people of God, do not be afraid. Listen to the word of the Lord who promises to be with us in every age. Spread this word to those who live without hope. Live this word as people who know God with us, Emmanuel. And now let the face of God shine upon you to bless you and save you from all doubt and danger. Through Jesus Christ, now and always. Amen.